Okay, the directions are solve the system of linear equations. Um, same directions as before. Call this example one. Okay. And what we have to do is solve this system. So just like before, we need a solution for x and a solution for y. Okay. So before we solve by the substitution method, we remember we talked about when to use the substitution method. We use the substitution method when one variable was by itself. Um, y equals or x equals. If you look at this example, I don't have that, right? I got 3x minus 4y equals negative 7, one of my equations, and the other one is negative 3x plus 5y equals 8. So I'm not going to do this by substitution method. I could, if I wanted to, solve one equation for y or x and use substitution, okay? But it's going to be a little bit less work if I do this by what's called the elimination method, okay? So in this case, whenever I have a, a system set up like, like it's shown, uh, the two variables are on the same side of the equation, in both equations, then I'm going to use elimination. Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick note of that. Solve by elimination. Okay, so again, it's going to be your decision. You're going to have to decide which method to use. Okay, so Remember, we're going to do elimination when our equations are set up like this, when they look like this. Okay, so what is elimination? Okay, the elimination method is going to go something like this. It's also called addition. Um, one of the properties of algebra, we're able to add two equations together without changing our x and y. Okay, so I could add both of these equations together and get a new equation and then work with that new equation. Okay, so look what happens when I do that in this example. Um, in this video, we're going to do three examples. And this first example is, is an easy one, okay? Um, because as I add these variables together, or I'm sorry, the equations together, look what happens with my x variable. If I add 3x and negative 3x together, what do I get? I get 0, right? They go away. And that's the whole purpose of this, to eliminate one of the variables, okay? So let's say I draw a line under here just to keep my work organized, and I add those two together. They're gone. All right, so negative 4y and 5y is 1y, and negative 7 plus 8 is 1. Like I said, the first one's easy, okay? So just like that, we've eliminated x and solved for y. So I know that y equals 1, all right? And now remember, when I solve these systems, I always have to find two solutions, x and y. So I'm not done yet. I have to go back and plug in y equals 1 into either one of my original equations, either one, to get the solution for x. So 3x minus 4 times y, which is 1, equals negative 7, okay? That's plugging that into that top equation. Um, and now if I solve this for x, I'm done. Okay, so rewrite 3x minus 4 times 1, which is just 4, equals negative 7. Okay, and now this is old stuff, stuff we know how to do, right? Add 4 to both sides, and I end up with 3x equals negative 3, right, because 4 is gone, All right, and then divide by 3, and I get my solution for x, which is negative 1. Okay, and there I have it, two solutions, x is negative 1, y is 1, okay, done. You can always go back and check those by plugging them into both equations to see if I get a true statement for both of these. Okay, so let's review what we did before we look at the next example. Um, I said I had two equations. I got x and y on the same side of both, so I'm going to use this elimination method. Okay, and this was an easy one. Like I said, this was an easy one because when I added these two guys together, I got zero. Okay, and this is the key. This is what we're going to be looking for right here for all these problems by elimination. You want 3x and negative 3x, or positive y and negative y, or positive 2x and negative 2x. You want the same coefficient for your variable, opposite sides, 3 and negative 3, 4 and negative 4, right? And that's going to eliminate one of my variables, okay? So let's try and do that with the next example. Okay, this I'll call example two. Example two. 
Solve the system of linear equations. Same directions, okay? Same chapter. Negative 4x plus y equals negative 22. 3x plus 2y equals 11. Solve by elimination. Oh, I'm sorry, solve the system. We decide to use elimination because x and y are on the same side, right? For both equations, I got x and y on the same side, x and y on the same side. So I'm gonna, I've decided to use elimination, okay? Um, so once I decided to use elimination, I want to add them together, right? Well, not in this example, right? If I add both of these together, negative 4x and 3x, I get negative 1x. If I add y and 2y, I get 3y. Nothing is eliminated, right? Remember what we're looking for. We need this. We need this to be the same number with opposite signs. Or we could do y as well. The first example, we eliminated x. I could eliminate y, but I need these two coefficients of y to be opposites, right? For example, 2 and negative 2. In this case, I don't have it. It's not given to me. It's not the easiest case like the first example. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it so we have those opposite signs. I can see in this one, if I multiply this guy by negative 2, then this will read negative 2y, right? And I have negative 2y and 2y. If I add them together, they'll go away. So how can I just make a negative 2 there? I can't just write negative 2 there, right? I can't do that. But what I can do, what we've done before, is multiply this whole top equation by negative 2. Okay, so watch this. See if you like this. I'm going to multiply this by negative 2. Okay, so is, if I do that, I have to multiply the other side by negative 2. That's another one of our properties of algebra that we've studied before. Right? If I multiply both sides of an equation by a number, it doesn't change the equation. Right? It'll look different, but it's still the same x and y. Okay, now here's the, the part that's a little tricky. We have to be able to see that when, that when I do this, I'll have a negative 2y here and I can eliminate y. Okay? So watch what happens. I'm going to rewrite the top equation by multiplying everything by negative 2. So I get 8x minus 2y. And on the other side, negative 22 times negative 2 is 44. Okay, so that's my top equation. Now notice, I'm not going to do anything to the bottom equation. Because if I leave it alone, look what I have. Right, I didn't change that. So how does that help me? Well, look what I got now. I got negative 2y and 2y. That's exactly what I want. For all elimination problems, I want the, the variable for one of my, the coefficient for one of my variables to have opposites. Opposite signs, same number. Okay, negative 2 and 2. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now add them together. See what happens. Add both of these equations together, and you should eliminate one of your variables. Right? That's why we call it elimination. Add those two guys together. That goes away. 8x plus 3x is 11x. 44 plus 11, 55. Okay, and now I have a nice easy equation to solve. I've eliminated one of my variables, so I'm going to divide by 11. And then I can, of course, solve for x. By both sides by 11, I get x equals 5. Okay? So we're going to finish this one in a second. Let's just go back and review the original problem. Before I put these negative 2's here, I said, well, wait a minute, I don't have opposites yet, so i got to make it so I do have opposites, this negative 2 and 2. So I decided if I multiply by negative 2, I would have those opposites. Okay? Um, but now the rest of the work's the same as before. I'm going to plug this 5 into either one of my original equations. I'll just pick the second one. doesn't matter. 3x. x is 5, so three, five, 3 times 5 plus 2y equals 11, right? And if I solve this, of course, that'll give me the solution for y, and then I'll be done, okay? So multiply 3 times 5, 15, plus 2y equals 11. And we know how to do this, right? Everybody knows how to do this. Subtract 15, subtract 15. Two y equals eleven minus fifteen is negative four, and then divide by two to get my solution for y, which is 
negative 2. y equals negative 2. Okay? And then we'd like to write our answers like this. There's a point on both of those lines. 5, comma, negative 2. Okay. One more example to go. Let's look at the next one. Okay, deep breath. One more to go. They're getting gradually harder. Let me jump back to the first example. Right? I was already given these opposites. 3x and negative 3x. That's easy. Add them together, it's gone. Example 2, I didn't have the opposite, so I had to make opposites by multiplying negative 2. I decided to eliminate y by multiplying by negative 2. Third example, okay, now look what I got. Call this example 3, and it's a little bit harder, right? Why is it a little bit harder? Because if you take a look at your equations, you got 2x and 3x, you got negative 3y and 7y. If I multiply this by some, I can't multiply 2 by any integer to get 3. Okay, I can't, like 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, it's no good. I can't get a negative 3x here. Now look at your y term. What can I multiply negative 3y by to get negative 7? Well, there's no integer that allows me to do that, right? So in this case, I can't do what I did in the second example. I can't multiply one equation by a number to get my opposites. So in this case, I've got to multiply both equations by a number. Okay, so this is a little bit more work. So the shortcut to do this without thinking too much, if I multiply 2 by this number, the 3, and then I multiply the 3 by this number, the 2, Right? So I multiply the top equation by 3, the bottom equation by 2. Those were these two coefficients flipped around. Then I'll have 6x and 6x. Right? That's good. But what am I missing here? Well, I need to do one of them to be negative. Right? And if I multiply the top equation by 3, then I'll end up with a 6x. The bottom equation by negative 2, then I'll end up with a negative 6x. Right? And that's the goal for these, to get those opposites. So when all else fails and I've got to multiply both equations by some number, how do I get those numbers? Well, if you want, the shortcut would be to take that number, put it here, take this number, put it here, right? And that will always guarantee you to have the same coefficient. And just make sure you end up with a negative when you're done. So let's see what happens when I do this. Multiply that first equation by 3, so I'm going to rewrite it. Whoops, 6x minus 9y equals negative 21. Next equation, negative 6x minus 14y equals negative 2. Okay, so a little more work to get these opposites, but I got them, right? Negative 6x and 6x, they're going to go away, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, all right? So add everything together, see what happens. Oh. Negative 6x and 6x is 0, so I've eliminated x. Add these two together, I get negative 23y. Twenty-three y, and then negative twenty-one and negative two, negative twenty-three. Okay, and now I can solve for y, right? Divide by the coefficient of y, which is negative twenty-three. That's a three. Okay, negative twenty-three. Both sides divide by negative twenty-three. And I got y by itself. Negative 23 divided by negative 23, of course, is 1. All right? So now that I've solved for y, I do what I do with all the examples we looked at in this chapter, and that's find the other variable. Don't forget to do that. All right? So I know that y is 1. I'm going to go back and substitute into the original equation, either one of these original equations, and I can figure out what x is. So 2x minus 3y. And I know the y is 1, so I'm going to plug a 1 in there. 2x minus 3y equals negative 7. 
right? And this part's not new, this part's always the same. So 2x minus 3. sides two x equals negative four divide by two and I get my solution for x is negative two. Okay, so now write our answer like we like to write them. Let's see if I can find some room here. How about right here? X is negative 2. Y is equal to 1. It's a point on a line. Remember, these are both lines, right? If we were to do this, if we graph both of these, which we know how to do, they would intersect at this point. Okay, negative 2, 1. Okay, so let's review real quick those three examples. Example 1, easy one. I already had those opposites. I added them together, they were gone, and I followed the process from there. Example two, I didn't have opposites, so I had to create those opposites. In order to create those opposites, I decided if I multiplied by negative two, then I would have those negative two y, positive two y. So that was one extra step, and then we just followed the same process from there. Example three, well, this one I had to do, there's nothing, I realized there's nothing I can multiply two by to get negative three. Nothing I can multiply negative 3y to get negative 7, so I had to go both equations, right? And the shortcut was just put this number there, this number there, and then go. Okay, so in summary of this chapter, we have substitution by, or solve by substitution, which we haven't done in a while. That was the first video. Second video, solve by elimination. Okay, so now we're going to do some practice on your own. Got to practice in order to get it.